Hey, this is Nelson with the E-Riders channel. Today we're going to be swapping out the Snap Cycle mechanical disc brakes for some hydraulic caliper brakes. So, I have the Snap Cycle R1. This is the uh, full size 26 inch by four tire, you know, by fat tire uh, e-bike that is on our stand. This is our work stand. So we got this raised up a little bit here. So we're going to take a look at the old and existing uh, Tektro. Now, <clears throat> the reason why you might want to change, and that's up to you, there is a, uh, a newer updated model coming out soon in the, in the summer, the Snap Cycle R1s. Uh, you'll have an option to choose the one with uh, the newer light, <clears throat> headlight, and the full hydraulic brake system. So, what we're going to do is we're going to change out the old mechanical ones, and we're going to put in these new uh, hydraulic calipers. So we're basically just replacing uh, this part right here. And it's only held in by, by two main bolts right here and here. And then we'll put this on and then we'll have a bit more stopping power because they're using the oil and it closes in on both sides right, right on your disc right here. So we're gonna do that. It doesn't take a lot. Um, what you'll need mostly are some Allen wrenches. And you'll probably need um, a little snipping tool to take this off if we can't feed it through. Uh, sometimes this won't go through here, so we might have to snip this off. And then if you uh, don't have any more of these caps, I'll put a link in the description uh, where you can buy some of these little caps. Then you just crimp it on uh, once you install the uh, hydraulic caliper. Now also, I'll put a link also to the to these hydraulic calipers as well. Now this is just one. There's you know a few different kinds. Uh, you may have seen uh, June Tech M1s. This is X Tech. June June uh, <clears throat> June Techs are about 150 bucks for a pair. Uh, you can get a pair of these for approximately 50, 60 bucks. Uh, they do the same thing, and they're just as good. So you can save yourself a hundred dollars. And again, like I said, I'll put the link to these down below. Be sure to check those out. All right, so we're gonna need also, like I said, little snippers to cut this off right here. And then you got your crimping tool for later on when you are putting on the little end caps. Like I said, I, you can buy these on Amazon. I'll put a link to it. Uh, I'm gonna use a, put black ones on. I know this is silver. Black is so much cooler. That's the first things first, we're going to snip this off right here. Get that out of the way. There we go. And then we're going to unloosen uh, the two main bolts, one up here and one up here. And then we'll loosen this up so we can pull this cable out. So let's go ahead and do the main. That's a little tight, so we're gonna do this so we have some more leverage. There we go, we got it. Once you get it started, it just gets a little easier from there. So now, as you can see, these bolts are a little long because they start way up here and they go all the way through. Then you have this, uh, this little bracket or adapter, it's like a spacer, so it goes all the way into the, you know, the frame right here. So that's a pretty long bolt to unscrew. But we're going to fast forward this for you so we get through this a little quicker. All right, so we're done with this side and we're going to go over to this side. You don't have much room to play because it's very tight so we're, it's going to be short turns might take a while to loosen up and maybe you can put it in just like that and turn it up oh, it's still going to get stuck even so we're going to go back to doing this and again these are long screws so this might take a while and we'll fast forward to the next one all right, so I think we got basically the main bottom part of that bolt out from the, the main of the frame, both of them. So now we're going to loosen this so we can pull the cable out. There we 
we go. Alright. Now careful, some of this might might be under tension, but uh, you don't need to unloosen it all the way, just enough to slide it out. Alright, we got that out, and now we can take it right here and should be able to pull it out just like this. Alright. And we can set this off to the side so it's out of the way. And see if we're close enough. Uh, nope, looks like the bolts are still in there except on the other side. So let's work on this one. You can almost get this by hand a little bit here. All right, so now we got this, this bolt completely out. And when you pull this out, be sure to maintain the correct uh, washers and, spacer, and spacers. And remember the, the screw orientation, the bolt orientation. As you can see, one is longer than the other, okay? Now, we can keep this bracket, this spacer that, that, that the old existing one will be fine. So you don't have to use the one that they supply, as you can see in the, in the bottom right here. You don't have to use that. You can use the old existing ones. But just make sure you remember the orientation when you put on this. That same long screw right here is going to go in the same spot on this and through here. Same as, as that side, just like that. All right. So we're going to go ahead and pull these off. And remember, don't lose these washers or spacers. All right, I've went ahead and taken off the spacer or adapter that came with this one. And I'm going to put on the old one that, that was already on the bike. And remember how it was. You can put it on as you had it. And be sure to take out the... Uh, the yellow guard that's protecting the, the brake pads from closing while in you know transport or while you're you know holding it and waiting for, to put to install it. All right, so we're gonna put this on there just like that, and then if you remember the where each bolt goes, I remember the long one went on this side, and then the shorter one went on this side and I'll put that right through there I missed it there we go and we're gonna put it on just like that and just tighten her up you can go ahead and start it if you can with your fingers just to get the thread started Okay. All right. Now, also, before you completely tighten this bolt and this bolt, uh, keep in mind there is still a little wiggle room where you can manipulate uh, the caliper. So, keep in mind, with that in mind, that you can check and make sure that your disc brake, your disc, is between the two brakes and not rubbing so you can actually spin your tire you know if so if it's over here you might hear rubbing like that if I pull it this way a little bit you might have a bit more if, if I find a sweet spot you won't have anything so before you tighten it make sure you found the, the sweet spot all right so we're gonna go ahead and tighten this up I get my allen wrench and we'll start tightening this up Again, this might take a little long because of the screws and the location of the bolt. But we'll go ahead and fast forward this for you and get to the next bolt. All right, so I'm spinning the tire and I, I don't hear anything. So we've tightened both of these up. Got this one and this one pretty tight. All right, and you can hear everything's fine. There's no rubbing. 
So we're going to start putting the cable into the caliper. Now, remember we've already cut the cap off this, so we're gonna recap it. Now the wires do kind of spread apart. I don't know if you can see that, if it focuses clearly on this or not. But we wanna twist these back up again into a nice fine point. Now careful, you could poke yourself too in, in, on your fingers, so you wanna be really careful. We want to do that because we're going to have to feed it through a couple of things. The first one we're going to feed it through is this section right here. And be very careful because if you try too hard or push too hard, this might snag on the inside. And then you got some wires that are just, you know, all by itself on the side. Then you have to retwist it again. So we have that through. And remember to keep this seated right into there. You can kind of see it's actually too far away. So we're going to bring this out here. We're going to bring this down some. We're going to twist this down here. There we go. And then we're going to bring this up here. Maybe let's twist. Let's bring it down some more. All right. And then we'll then we'll bring it, bring this up here so it doesn't move. So we got this seated in here. And that's exactly what we want. We're gonna loosen this top uh, screw off because you can't really see back here, but back here is a little clamp that closes down on this wire. So we're gonna loosen that up. Maybe we can do it by hand a little bit here. Okay, now you just maybe pick up the, either feed it through or you might be able to pick it up completely and feed it through. I'm going to loosen it up some more just so I get enough room to get in there. There we go. I think we got it. Oh, almost. I thought I had it. Nope. Let's loosen up a little bit more. We're almost at the point of just taking it off. But well, as you can see, the little claw right here, how it, how it's uh, angled over. Uh, that's how you want this underneath there so it clamps down on it uh, here we've opened it we've opened it up so much you could probably just poke it right through so yeah we just poke it right through at this point so we're going to clamp it down again make sure this is seated in, into here properly give it a little a little tension by pulling this inward a little bit and tighten this up clamping down on that cable <clears throat> now it's spinning there's no grinding I'm gonna hit the brake all right, I'm gonna spin it again, hit the brake. All right, I'm gonna spin it again, hit the brake. All right, so it looks like we got what we wanted there. Now let's, let's not forget to cap this off right at the end. So I'm gonna grab one of these little black caps and crimp it on so that wire doesn't continue to fray. See if we can get it all in there. Looks like we did. And we're just going to crimp it. All right, so that's one side done. And this, uh, this is the back side. This is the rear tire. And then 
The front tire is basically the same, but as you can see, the bolts, the bolts which are right here and right here are a lot easier to get to and, and turn with the wrench. So it's not as much of a pain as the back because you got, you know, frame, frame, and a bunch of other components, but it's really easy to get to those right here. So you basically just repeat the same process and then you're done. And again, this is Nelson with uh, E-Riders. Uh, this is the Snap Cycle R1. And don't forget, these guys are uh, bringing out an, uh, an upgraded model with hydraulic brakes in, in, in the summertime. So have yourself you know, a, a newer bike if you want a you know, full hydraulic system. Or you can upgrade your older bikes to the hydraulic calipers, which is a kind of a hybrid. Because you still have the... You know the mechanical levers brake levers but you get you're getting a hydraulic caliper instead and being a you know a fat tire e-bike these bikes are heavy and the snap cycle is quite powerful very fast and with the amount of speed and you know power this thing has you definitely want something that will match its stopping power so hydraulic is the way to go all right so again Descriptions on everything is at the bottom. Also, there's a coupon code for a snap cycle. If you're interested in a snap cycle, check that out. Thanks, guys. See you next time.